Hey guys, it's Leah B from Prestige Veteran Medical Consulting. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant, and former compensation and pension examiner. So today I want to come on and discuss sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea, and how that can be related to GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we have a lot of videos on OSA and we have not done it related to GERD yet. It's not one of, in my opinion, it's not one of the more common ways that I see obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, veterans receive compensation for obstructive sleep apnea as secondary as a secondary condition, but it is one that I see from time to time, and I have some research on it that I am happy to share, uh, so that you it may help you in your pursuit of VA disability. Maybe you can talk to your doctor about it, see if they think there's an overlap. So remember that just because you have one condition and you have the other condition doesn't necessarily mean that that is the cause for you. It's often multifactorial. It can depend on what your risk factors are. So if a person is 40% BMI and they're, you know, obese, it may be a little bit, it, it may be more of a stretch to say that the GERD is the cause of the sleep apnea because the, you know, weight gain is, uh, obesity is one of the more common causes of obstructive sleep apnea due to collapse of the upper airway. So sometimes I write letters for GERD and and OSA, and it, it's including a whole bunch of other conditions. So I never choose one or another condition when I write a letter because I think it's important to include all risk factors, positive and negative. So that that is, in my opinion, the heart of a good letter is to discuss all of the risk factors, even if they're not helpful to the veteran, because we have to give an objective, like we weighed this, we looked at this, they have these risk factors. And in totality of the evidence, after I've reviewed everything, it's my opinion that despite this or this, or because of these combinations of conditions, their sleep apnea is related to their service. So oftentimes I may see somebody that has obesity as an intermediate step, or I may see that they have allergic rhinitis, they also have GERD, so I include all of those conditions in a letter that I prepare so that it is a more well-rounded opinion. That doesn't mean it has to be done that way. This is Leah B's opinion. Everybody has their own opinion, and you know what they say about opinions, right? So, you know, your doctor may just want to write a paragraph, and that may be well more than enough for you to receive service connection if he just writes that he believes that it's related to your GERD for whatever the reason. But hopefully some of these articles may be helpful to you. So just to throw out the disclaimer that I always throw out, I'm not an accredited claims agent. I'm not a VSO. I'm not an attorney. I don't represent clients. I work with a lot of accredited legal representatives that are representing clients, and I write medical opinions for those cases. Remember, medical opinions are never required. They can be gotten for little to no cost from your treating provider. Or you can come to somebody like me who can forensically review your records and write an opinion based on the things that they review. So to get on to what we were discussing, I'm going to read some of these articles off and, and that way you guys can go and take a look at them and see if it may apply to you or you can have that frank discussion with your treating provider and they may or may not agree that these things are related. So the first one is, I have a bunch. Um, so the relationship between obstructive sleep apnea, hypopnea syndrome, and gastroesophageal reflux disease, a meta-analysis, which was published in Sleep and Breathing in 2019, looks at the relationship between the two conditions, and the meta-analysis reviewed 2,600 patients from seven articles and provided direct evidence of GERD's participation in the pathogenesis of obstructive sleep apnea. So take a look at that article. Another article published in the Journal of Neurogastroenterology and Motility in January of 2010 titled Gastroesophageal Reflux Disease and Sleep Disorders, Evidence for a Causal Link in Therapeutic Implication is a good article that looks at the relationship. There is, is the severity of obstructive sleep apnea or the magnitude of respiratory effort associated with gastroesophageal reflux? That was published in 2005 in the World Journal of Gastroenterology and discusses the relationship. There's a positive correlation between endoscopic findings of GERD and the AHI or the apnea hypopnea index, so kind of the severity. They propose that the severity of OSA and GERD are parallel to each other. Another article, Association Between Obstructive Sleep Apnea Severity and Endoscopically Proven Gastroesophageal Reflux Disease, published in Sleep and Breathing in 2018, further discussed the comorbid nature. They wrote that 216 patients were enrolled in 
and separated into a GERD group and a non-GERD group and found that OSA-related findings were worse in the GERD group than the other non-GERD group. It concluded by stating endoscopically proven GERD was associated with more severe OSA. GERD symptoms were also associated with the deteriorated sleep quality. So that is several articles. Let me see if there's any more in here. Yeah, so those are, those are some good ones. And that's not, there are other articles out there and those articles may have other tidbits in there that are helpful as well. So I hope this empowers you guys to go out and look at that research to have a better understanding of, you know, that relationship. I have some other videos on what happens in an obstructive sleep apnea compensation and pension exam, some of those other connections that we discussed as well. Also a slew of videos on GERD itself and how it can be related to other conditions. So I hope this was helpful. Again, please drop some comments if you have any questions and thanks for watching.